hello and good morning everyone so now today we will be discussing about the uh, some of the vaccines that has been recommended on a epi schedule that is module 2 epi's vaccines which has been uh, proposed by the who that is world health organization and from the the conference on geneva so we will talk about this document this was includes a lot of vaccine like bcg oral polio diphtheria pertussis and tetanus hepatitis b measles vaccine yellow fever vaccine tetanus toxoid hemophilus and frenzy type b these are the vaccine that is included on the epi schedule somewhere it is known as the essential program on immunization in other countries it is referred as expanded program uh, program on immunization and these are present this api schedule vaccination is present all over the world and every child born in this world need to be get vaccinated according to this api schedule there are more addition in some of the de developed country some developed countries give more vaccine but not less than this so the, we have to know about this vaccine clearly okay so talking about the list of uh, we will uh, first our uh, EPI preventable disease that is in uh, immunization preventable disease that will include this tuberculosis that is VCG vaccine, polio, DPT, hepatitis B vaccine, measles vaccine, yellow fever vaccine, and tisanetoxide. We will discuss about detail about this vaccine. Okay, so talking about the VCG vaccine, let's before going in, uh, we need to understand what is VCG. VCG vaccine protects against the tuberculosis in infant and BCG stand for the letter B, C and G stand for the bacillus of Calamity and Guerlain. So the bacillus is why this is bacillus because tuberculosis is a bacteria that is rods or say bacillus and this two name Calamity and Guerlain comes from the scientist who has developed from it. To understand this we need to go back into the uh, some of the features like uh, let me go into the history first you have to understand what is bcg vaccine we have known this is the vaccine that prevent us from getting the tuberculosis so how what is the source how it is made is important also so the bcg vaccine against tuberculosis the bcg vaccine is prepared from the weakened strand of the mycobacterium bovis so we know there is a mycobacterium complex among them mycobacterium bovis is there which is causing the gastrointestinal uh, tb you can say the the weakened strand not the active strand the weakened strand of this mycobacterium bovis is obtained and then they it is introduced inside your body so you have to understand that actually the live bacteria is introduced inside your body but that is weakened and how it is weakened by repeated subculture so we have we have subcultures this bacteria this uh, uh, mycobacterium bovis uh, actually we have done 230 subculture which takes around 11 to 13 years for the development of this vaccine this weakened strain so the back the vaccine which you get is actually the live bacteria of mycobacterium bovis but it is the weakened strain and how it is weakened it is weakened over the 11 to 13 years after the repeated subculture and a point where we reached then we think okay let, let's administrate this bacteria into this uh, animal or say guinea pig and we found it is not developing the tuberculosis then uh, but it since the bacteria is introduced inside your body the antigen is preserved the body will form the antibody <clears throat> and that antibody will be above the threshold and will be protective and when actually the live tuberculosis bacteria will attack us the pathogenic the virulent one already we have the antibody level and that will neutralize that bacteria that will kill that bacteria that will activate the complement pathway that will opsonize and kill those bacteria and clear from the body so the main concept of vaccine is the basic principle is same you just need to give the administered the same bacteria or virus so the body form the antibody and when actually the live uh, organism the pathogenic the deadly the virulent organism attack you at that level your own <coughs> antibody that has been formed previously due to the vaccination will protect you so we have done 230 subcultures of this mycobacterium bovis repeatedly and we reached to the weakened strain that will actually form the antibody but will not cause you the disease so that was the concept and how this mycobacterium were close mycobacterium bovis were weakened by repeated subculture if you do a subculture of the bacteria it loses its property so uh, after 230 uh, subculture so about around 13 11 to 13 years what happened this weakened strand of mycobacterium bovis was obtained 
and uh, and this was which a bacteria which is closely related to mycobacterium tuberculosis which caused the disease the vaccine was developed over a period of 13 years from 1908 to 1921 and the, the french bacteriologist albert calmity and Camille Gurin. So from their name, that is Albert Calmiti and Camille Gurin, we named this Bacillus B Calmiti. This is this C and G is Gurlin. So you have to understand the full form of BCG as well. We named the product Bacillus Calmiti Gurin or BCG. The vaccine is as administered, administered shortly after the breath only in infant at high risk of tuberculosis. BCG vaccine produces an immune response that part, partly protects the infant and young children from serious form of tuberculosis because of the risk of the infection and variability of the production associated with the vaccine, it is used only in the country where the prevalence of tuberculosis is high. The endemic region like Asia or say Africa, these are the places where we routinely, actually in Nepal, if you talk about the Nepal, we routinely just after birth give this species of vaccine to the in newborn child. So we have understood about the some of the background what is BCG vaccine, how the name come, how it is developed. It is developed from the Mycobacterium bovis, which the weak end strand of Mycobacterium bovis, and that is obtained from the repeated subculture uh, of around 230 subculture, which takes around 11 to 13 years to develop that. Okay, now let's come to the, we have understood the, uh, what is the full form, and then the bacillus describe the shape of the bacteria, BCG. So bacillus for calamity and gurin, B for describe the shape of the bacterium, calamity and gurin and the name of the people who develop the vaccine. BCG comes in the powder form before use must be reconstituted with the accompanying diluent. So they are actually form, come in the powder form and we need to dilute with the accompanying diluent. The reconstituted vaccine is even more sensitive to heat than the powder and must therefore used within six hours or dispose, disposed of. So the important thing is that when you get this, when you need to get this vaccinated or you are sending this vaccine into the local rural areas, then you have to understood we cannot keep more than six hours after reconstitution. The powder can be preserved for a longer period of time. But once you put the dilute inside the powder, that becomes the, now because it is a constituted BCG, you need to give within six hours. That is important. Okay, so they are heat they can be damaged due to heat and if you are giving a BCG vaccine that is more than six hours then that can be not be that may be damaged and you, you got the vaccine but you will not develop the protection so that will be the vaccine failure you may, may have the false conception that I have the vaccine but you will get the disease because you actually doesn't get the vaccine you got the vaccine but the bacteria or say the weakened stem mycobacterium bovis will be damaged and there will be no immunity so it is equally equal to not getting the vaccine so you have to understand that before the reconstitution of bcg measles and yellow fever vaccine they are more heat stable than opb and certainly other than the other vaccine but after reconstitution they are less stable so after reconstitution administration should be fast should be given within as soon as possible how it is stored the vcg vaccine and dilute should be stored at temperature between 0 to 8 degrees celsius that is important and vcg vaccine is now is not damaged by freezing so it is not damaged by freezing so we can press this vaccine so we can keep in the freeze store bcg vaccine and it's dilute side by side in a refrigerator or the vaccine carrier so we can store two to eight degrees celsius zero to eight, eight degrees celsius we can store in the vaccine carrier bag there is the uh, temperature is maintained two to eight or so zero to eight so it is good for the carrying of this vaccine on by your cold chain maintenance and we can actually store this vaccine and it will be not be damaged but dilute and carrier should be stored separately once you reach to the uh, particular vaccination center, you just reconstitute it and then give to the uh, to the people who have came for vaccination or send you one child. When it is given, VCG is given at birth or as soon as possible thereafter, it should not be given to the children who give signs and symptoms of AIDS. One important thing that you need to be clear about the vaccination that we cannot give any live vaccine to the immunocompromised host. A person who has born recently, who has any, uh, who has immunocompromised disease or who is suffering from the AIDS, that patient should not be given because once you give this organism and your immune system is actually low or nil then you will develop the tuberculosis and after developing the tuberculosis in the newborn child there will be a lot of confusion because people initially think, think of them mainly they, they develop the disseminated tuberculosis or meningitis or brain, say brain tuberculosis and the patient the doctors or the physician have on the 
treatment protocol towards the other side. They usually think of bacterial or viral other uh, tuberculosis and they treat it. the patient actually become very uh, serious, may die or may we even have neurological or say complication. So this vaccine, all live vaccine is good but it should be not be given to any immunocompromised patient because in the immunocompromised patient although we have made this uh, bacteria weakened by repeated subculture still it is a live bacteria it is multiplied inside your body and if you have no immune system it will cause you the disease and you will be the sufferer and that is very devastating you uh, you believe me i have seen a patient in india in uh, medanta where we have seen a Pakistani newborn baby that was actually have immunodeficiency and he has a severe condition. He was treated in all over many institutes over the different countries, but there was not a successful treatment. So immunocompromised patient, if you are giving the vaccine, be careful. So you need to screen your child because your child may have the immunocompromised disease and they will actually through the vaccine, they will not get benefited, they will get harmed. So that you have to understand. So the number of dose and uh, dose size, number of number and size of doses actually actually one dose includes 0.05 ml. If there is no scar at the injection site, six weeks after the BCG immunization, the injection must be repeated. This is important. If you remember, you everybody in the left arm you have a, one of the scar that is a given due to intradermal of the BCG, and this is given every every portion for the universal. So there will be given to the top layer of skin and the upper left arm. So this makes it universal. So all doctor, all physician in every part of the world can understand, okay, he has taken this BCG vaccine. So for universality, they're given into the particular fixed site and the scar indicates there is the vaccination was successful. If you have no scar, injection site, six weeks after the BCG immunization, the injection must be repeated. So you need to repeat it. If Still, there is no scar. Six weeks after the second injection, then child should be referred to a physician. So the important thing is, first, you give the vaccine. If there is no scar, you wait for the six weeks. If still no scar, then you repeat the injection. And if he, still there is no scar after uh, second injection as well, then you need to think that there must be some problem and you need to go to the physician, okay? So you must be see the scar of your children of your successful vaccination. Where and how it is given by BCG vaccine is usually injected in the top layer of the skin of the upper left arm. Health worker are use the same place on every child for BCG infection so that everyone knows where to look for the scar. And this is for the universalization. What is the position, needle position of the injection of BCG vaccine? We give in the intradermal, you know this is the epidermis, dermis, then subcutaneous layer and muscle layer. If you are going to the muscle, it will be 90 degree. If you are subcutaneous, there will be 45 degree. If you are into intravenous, 25 degree. If you go to the dermis, then it will go to the 15 degree. So in 15 degree needle, when you go reach to the dermis, where you have to give intradermal, and then this is the place where the vaccine is given. This is usually a healthcare professional is trained. All the nurses, all the uh, vaccine givers, say those uh, who give the vaccine, who administer the vaccine, they know about the injection site and they will develop successfully. Talking about the side effect, normal reaction BCG vaccine is injected in a small raised lump appearance at the site of injection. This usually repairs within the 30 minutes. So there should be a some normal side effect approximately uh, two weeks are red so developed which is 10 mm in diameter the size of the end of an in unsharped pencil so the sore remains for another two weeks and then heal a small scar about 5 mm across remains this is a sign that child has been effectively humanized so scar is actually important so to, to for your effective immunization against the bcg and it will take around two weeks to become the scar to heal so you don't need to you have just administration and now you will check for the scar there will be the reaction there will be initially raised lump uh, appearance then that will be developed into red soul then that, that will heal and then form the scar sometime what happen the swelling of the glands or formation of the abscess occur so the draining lymph node into the axilla sometimes the gland in the children in the armpit so axilla or near the elbow swells up after injection with the bcg vaccine or if or he or she may develop an abscess swollen gland and abscess occur so there may be your inguinal uh, sorry inguinal or axillary or, or you can say at the side of the elbow you will have this your lymph node may be enlarged or may be developed abscesses it can be due to on trial needle or syringe was used too much vaccine was injected the vaccine was injected under the skin instead instead of the top in the dermal layer 
so that we have to understand if it is vaccine is not properly administered at the site if it is the onistrile syringe or needle or that there is a high volume of the vaccine injected that will develop this lymph node enlargement and abscess as well so the administration guideline is at birth if not given at birth any time after that so first every child should be given at birth if it is not given due to any circumstances like home delivery or remote places then as soon as they come into the healthcare facilities they need to administration this bcg vaccine dose is usually 0.05 ml see the manufacturer instruction if child is over one year old we usually give double dose so it is will 0.1 ml so half dose is given at birth. If you consider an adult, we would say one year old and above, we give 0.1 ml. Number of dose is single injection site is upper left arm in the top layer of the skin. So this is all about your BCG vaccine. We have known some of the important point of the BCG vaccine. And let me talk, we have discussed about the BCG vaccine. It is against the tuberculosis, it's developed from mycobacterium to be a bovis, which is the weakened component, which is the weakened strain. It was developed by this Albert Calamity and Camille Gurin scientists. So it is named after them BCG that we have known they, they prevent from the this tuberculosis. Let's go some of the thing about the history of this development of this vaccine. We know this is the live vaccine live attenuated vaccine developed from the mycobacterium bovis and it was actually uh, developed by these two scientists which have already known about this but you have to also understand this tuberculosis is initially where uh, so one how it, this came from actually this came from let me get to a point by these two scientists the first administration the first human administration of this bcg was by Benjamin Well Halley in 1785-80 and assisted by the Raymond Tropin at the Charity Hospital in the Paris. So they were in the Paris, these two scientists, and they have administration to a baby, newborn baby, when in a condition where a women had died because of tuberculosis few after giving the health, healthy infant. So there was a woman who died due to tuberculosis, but she gave birth to a baby that was a healthy. So these two uh, gentlemen or this, uh, these two doctors think about giving the vaccine to that baby. So initially they thought what will be the root of the administration. At that time they give this vaccine by oral, the oral route was chosen. So they give the oral route and the baby had actually survived. The baby doesn't develop the tuberculosis. So that was the first human trial, first human person who get who get prevented from tuberculosis because her mother was actually infected with the tuberculosis. Then it was continued, it was actually continued, the oral route was continued, but there was a, some objection by a lot of scientists and uh, till one day what happened, there was a, one of the disaster records and that is called the, the Lubeck disaster in which what happened, the vaccine which was transported to the lab get contaminated with the virulent one virulent mycobacterium tuberculosis. So what happened? They sent the weakened mycobacterium to bovis uh, bacteria, but in lab, what happened? The actually virulent one get contaminated to that vaccine and many people died. Actually, in that uh, of 250 vaccinated people, you can see this is the, there were two, uh, out of 250 vaccinated people, 73 deaths were observed. 